page 134 and move on to page 135. So covalent bonds is when two nonmetal atoms share valence electrons so they both can end up with configurations like a group 18 element. What we need to start talking about is bond polarity. And what bond polarity describes, it describes how well those atoms share. Do they share 50-50 or not so equally? So when we have a nonpolar bond, okay, the electrons are shared equally in the bond. And the reason for this is that the nonmetal atoms have either the same or similar electronegativity values. And what this does is, a, is it allows the electron, the electrons in those valence orbitals to equally distribute between the two nuclei. So the end, that electronegativity difference, it is less than 0.5. So basically the, it will be somewhere between 0 and 0.4. So if our END, our end is difference, is somewhere in this range, we classify it as a nonpolar bond. Whereas polar, polar bonds form when the electrons are not shared equally. The, and the reason is that the nonmetal atoms have, have very different electronegativity values. So they have different electronegativity values. The nonmetal with the higher electronegativity has a stronger pull on the electrons in the bond and it pulls the electrons towards itself. So the END is greater or equal to 0.5. So basically we will see a range of somewhere an END of 0.5 to somewhere around 2.0 within that range. And as a result, we have an asymmetrical distribution of the electrons, that electron orbital, creating these partial char charges. So if you take a look here, so in this first picture, you see how there's kind of, it's very symmetrical. The electron valence orbital that's being shared is equally distributed between the two nuclei. Where here, the, there's a definite difference in the cloud. One size is electron rich and the other side is electron poor. So if you take a look here, fluorine has an electronegativity of four and hydrogens is around 2.2. So fluorine, definitely has a much stronger pull. So a stronger pull on the shared electrons. So the electrons shift this way towards the fluorine. So now the fluorine has all of its electrons plus the shared ones. So as it's electron rich, which means or electrons carry negative charge, so if this side is electron rich, it's going to have a partial charge of negative. So that means it's electron rich. Where the hydrogen has a weaker pull on the electrons, so the electrons leave it behind a little bit, so we would say this side has a lower electron density or electron poor. So it has less availability to the electrons in that bond. So here we go, a little summary on page 135. So the covalent bond polarity, so the polarity describes how well you're sharing based on the electronegativity difference. So END, we've talked about this before, stands for electronegativity difference. So here we go. I want to see if I can highlight this a little bit or just go with a little bit of transparency here. So in this area here, 
where do not doing a great job here. Okay, so we have an electron negativity difference. It goes from zero to 0 0.4. If that's if where if that difference falls between zero and 0.4, we say it is a non polar covalent bond. So this means is that we have equal sharing. Now, if, if we have a little bit bigger level of difference, where our difference is in this region, it's at least 0.5 and it reaches close to 2.0, then there is still sharing, we, but it's less sharing, so we would say it is a polar covalent bond. So we would just simply say we have unequal sharing. And then we can get to an area where the electronegativity difference becomes greater than 2.0 and there is no sharing going on. So there's no sharing where we actually have a transfer. And in this case, if we have an actual transfer, then it's no longer covalent now it becomes ionic. And typically we see this because it's a metal plus a nonmetal. So this little summary arrow here tends to help. So let's just do some practice here. Here we go. So you need to take a look at your table S. And you have to look up ENVs. They're listed. So when you go on to table S, Na, you will see that its electronegativity is 0.9, and oxygen's electronegativity is 3.4. So we looked up both of their electronegativities. The D is the difference. Just calculate the difference. And the difference between oxygen's electronegativity and sodium's is 2.5. So that difference of 2.5 is in this region. So I would predict the bond between sodium and oxygen when it forms is ionic in nature. Now I'm going to take a look at these two elements. So when I look on table S, bromine's electronegativity is shown to be 3.0. Iodine's electronegativity is shown to be 2.7. The D is to calculate the difference, and that difference is 0 0.3. So this difference, it falls in this range, this pink range, which means that the bond is covalent, and it's pretty equal sharing, so it's nonpolar covalent. And the last example is between carbon and fluorine. When we take a look at carbon's electroneg electronegativity value, it's listed as 2.6. Fluorine's is shown to be 4.0. The D means difference. So when you calculate the difference, it is 1.4. And you take a look. This difference of 1.4, it is 0.5 or greater, but less than 2. So it is a covalent bond, but we would describe it as polar because it's not, they're not sharing the electrons equally. So this means we have a polar covalent bond. Now, here we go. Last part of this. So the atom with the higher or larger electronegativity, it will carry a partial 
negative charge. So this like weird little sign, it's like a fancy D with a curly Q, that stands for partial. And so that's our electron ridge or a denser area of where electrons exist. By default, the atom with the lower electronegativity, it will carry a partial positive charge because the, it's electron poor or it has, it's less dense, so it's electron light. So there's two things that you may have to do, so let's look at a couple of examples. Assigning partial charges. So the first thing you do is look up their electronegativities. Hydrogen's EN is 2.2 and chlorine's is 3.2. Chlorine has the higher electronegativity and that difference is a one. So in this case, I can show it like this. The electrons shared between hydrogen and chlorine those electrons are pulled towards the chlorine because it has the greater electronegativity value. So this side has the higher EN. It has the greater electron pull towards it. And notice we do this arrow with a plus side, so that means that the electrons spend less time towards here. So if we're going to do the partial charge sign, so that weird, like, looking like little curly Q, the side with the higher electronegativity, electron rich. More electrons, more negativity there. The opposite side, where the electrons are pulled away from, less negativity there, so that side is positive. Let's take a look at a couple more examples. So down here we have water. So oxygen's electronegativity value, as shown on table S, is 3.4. Hydrogen is still a 2.2. Well, oxygen has the greater electronegativity value, so the bond of the electron shared between this first hydrogen and that oxygen, they are pulled towards the oxygen. The same thing is true. This other hydrogen, its electronegativity is still less than the oxygen's, so the oxygen has a stronger pull and is pulling those electrons towards itself. So if we have to do the partial signs, draw them in there. Because the electrons are pulled towards the oxygen, the oxygen side of the molecule, partial negative, and the side of the molecule where each of the hydrogens, hydrogens are, partial positive. Here we go, now we have nitrogen. And when you look up its electronegativity values, this first nitrogen, its electronegativity value is three, and the other nitrogen's electronegativity value is three. Because they have the same ENs, there is, there is no um, electron rich or poor side. Um, both nitrogens have the same or equal pull on the shared electrons. So in this case, when this happens, this is nonpolar, this is a nonpolar bond. That means that there are no partial charges because there's equal pull. The electrons are equally distributed within the bond. So our last example over here, we have carbon dioxide looking up their values. Um, oxygen, because we saw it here, is still 3.4. So we have a 3.4 for each of the oxygens. And the carbons, electronegativity value listed on table S is 2.6. The oxygens, this oxygen has a greater pull on the electrons in this bond because oxygen has the higher electronegativity. So the electrons are going to be pulled in this direction. The other oxygen has a greater pull on the electrons within the bonds between it and the carbon. 
So those electrons are pulled more towards the oxygen. So if we're doing the partial charge signs, since the electrons here in this, on the left double bond are pulled more towards the oxygen, this oxygen has a negative sign. And because these electrons on the right side double bond are pulled more strongly towards that more right oxygen, that oxygen also has a partial charge of negative. For the carbon, the electrons are being pulled away in both directions, so the carbon has a partial charge of positive. With a little bit of practice, you'll be able to get this down.